the West is going to be a bloodbath next season. We got 13 teams all fighting for a spot in the playoffs. Even the teams that were out of it last season took a step forward and will be a tough matchup on a nightly basis. Except for Utah and Portland, the others all have something to play for. Even the Spurs, who were 14th last season, could make a run at the play-in zone, now with veteran additions and CP3 and Harrison Barnes. In fact, I'd go so far as to say that if we put the Spurs in the East, for example, they're a lock for the play-in. I'm calling it now. The Spurs are going to be in the playoff race next year. The 22-win San Antonio Spurs were plus 9 points per 100 possessions when Wembenyama, Trey Jones, and Devin Vassell all played together. Wembenyama is going to be even better next year, perhaps by a lot, than he was as a rookie. If you put competent NBA players around this dude next year, this team is going to win 40 games. They're going to be in the playoff race if they want to be. A-plus work by the Spurs. Just think about how much easier it would be for Wembenyama this year, who didn't even have a point guard to play off of, and now has a legend in CP3 teaching him the pick and roll game and who knows what else. Even though he's 39 and this following season could easily be his last, Paul brings so much more than a point guard presence to this young team. A starting five of these two, plus Barnes, a pure scorer in Devin Vassell, and pick one from Keldon Johnson, Sohan, or Zach Collins, this is a solid lineup. The Chris Paul effect could be stronger than ever possibly with a superstar on the rise, this team could easily improve by 10 plus wins. Sacramento is another team that missed the playoffs but now got significantly better. With the acquisition of DeMar DeRozan, the Kings established themselves as a top 6 team in the West, at least on paper. With sharpshooters Kevin Herter and Keegan Murray surrounding the big three, Malik Monk exploding from the bench and a couple of solid additions in Jalen McDaniels and Jordan McLaughlin, the Kings have a deep roster ready to compete with the West juggernauts. If the fit wasn't going to be ideal for DeMar on the Lakers, with this team he can be his old self. They don't need another three-point shooter, and DeRozan can operate with Sabonis in the pick and roll, or play off of the attention that Fox requires. He's a mid-range assassin, and along with Swiper, they'll form one of the best mid-range duos in the league. Also, he's adding experience and clutch shooting to a team that was in the playoff hunt till the very end but couldn't hold on. Sacramento fell down to the ninth seed at the end of the season as they went 4-6 in their last 10 games and let important matchups against direct opponents slip away before getting knocked out of the play-in by the Pelicans. But with DeMar on the roster, things could be different next season. Russo to inbound, throws it, to tie it! Yeah! The marvelous DeRozan does it again in Indianapolis and we're going to overtime! The situation in Memphis should be different as well given all the time they had to recover from that hospital of injuries that they dealt with last season. John Moran already led this team twice to the second seed in the conference before they fell victim to injuries and non-basketball related matters. Memphis Grizzlies star John Morant has been suspended for a second time after once again appearing to flash a gun on social media. Adding the 7'5 rookie giant Zach Eady to an old defensive core and Marcus Smart and Jaron Jackson Jr. should really tighten up the defense and opposing teams will have trouble scoring against them. George felt pressure down low, drive. Edie said not tonight, Filipowski, Euro step, how about that pass inside, picked up by Memphis, oh, you know, it just depends, there it is, it hit the rim, there's a tap, oh, you pulled it, Edie taps it home. If healthy and focused solely on playing basketball, the Grizzlies could easily return among the West elite. Here goes Moran, he spins, Moran scores, John Moran! wins it for the Grizzlies. I don't know that there's anybody in this league that can guard this young man one-on-one. -on -one. The Warriors, on the other hand, might not get back in that group, but certainly recovered well after losing Clay. And if you compare the pieces that left the team in Thompson, Chris Paul and Dario Saric with the new signings of Buddy Heald, Kyle Anderson and DeAnthony Melton, one can argue that the quality of the team overall remained the same. There are still a lot of questions about Wiggins' future in Golden State as he could be on the move and hopefully for a serious upgrade like Laurie Markkinen. Whatever happens, however, it will be a waste if Steph Curry doesn't get more help towards the end of his prime. Curry comes free, gets the ball, puts up a three-pointer. Bang! Steph Curry nails the three-pointer with seven tenths of a second remaining. 
More Curry chaos. His ninth three-pointer. He's got 30 points. The Rockets are another team that just missed the playoffs and they're going to get better simply by their young guys taking a natural step forward and playing a year plus together. And when you consider that almost every one of the playoff teams got better, you see how wild the West will be. Just a quick reminder that I got some new designs up on my merch store and I love how they came out. We got Luca with the smoking rifle here in the Wild West. Then there is this Wemby design that looks awesome, really emphasizing his length. And check out Book here with his fancy retro car and the Arizona desert in the background. Of course, I have to have a shirt for Lakers Nation as well, so here you have Bron, AD and Reeves. Click the link in the description and check them out. To me, it looks like we have a clear divide between the 4 best teams and the rest. Dallas and OKC with their newest additions are the scariest teams in the conference. The Thunder are going to be a defensive powerhouse with Caruso and Hartenstein. Find Siakam, their leader. Swift by Caruso, final seconds, Levine can tie it, Zach Levine, Caruso for the lead! While Clay could be the X factor for the Mavs, providing a lot of floor spacing for Luca and Kyrie to just cook. Uh, Luca just playing off him, Kai, and the rest of the guys. Uh, I can help them space the floor and knock down shots or play defense, whatever's needed. Kyrie and I are good friends. I mean, we came in the lead together in 2011. We played on Team USA together twice. At this point in my career, I mean, still can't leave me open, and I'm just excited. I still think I can do what I've been able to do, and I just uh, still know I can be a very, very good player in this league. Minnesota didn't even need to do too much, they're still right there. Denver is also in the mix despite losing a key piece in KCP and not replacing him up to this point. Then you have the other teams like Phoenix with their big three and a new coach. The Clippers made a bunch of moves and who knows what they're going to look like next season. If healthy, the Pelicans are always dangerous and now they have a nice upgrade at the point guard position in DeJounte Murray. And of course, you gotta mention the Lakers, however the roster looks, they still have LeBron and AD. So the 5 through 13 race in the West is going to be absolute madness. I got no idea how to rank these teams. Two or three losses in a row could take you from the playoff spot to damn near out of the play-in zone. That's how close I expect it to be next season. Last year, West teams combined for 650 wins total, while the East gathered 580 wins. With the offseason move so far, the gap is even bigger now. The Western Conference has never been more competitive top to bottom. If you're not one of the two rebuilding teams, you're in the conversation potentially about making the playoffs, and that is absolutely insane. By the way, speaking of rebuilding, do you know that Dirk Nowitzki was actually a Milwaukee Bucks pick? What? And yeah, they made a colossal mistake of trading him on draft night for Robert Tractor Trailer, and the rest is history. Crazy. I've got an entire video of these draft day trades that changed NBA history, so you gotta check out this video right here. Talk to you in the next one. Peace out.